One, two, three. What's up, everyone? Hi guys, it's me Matt and this is probably the first time that you have seen me in front of the camera because I'm really a conscious type of person and then I'm really shy in front of the camera as well. When I'm in my group of friends, I'm really not shy and I'm very extroverted. I'm an ambivert kind of person and when I'm with my friends, I'm really outgoing and have no shyness if that makes sense. But whenever I am filming myself in front of the camera, I feel very shy which is very weird for some reason because it's kind of the opposite. So first of all, I am a Filipino, I am an Ilonggo. So sa mga pod ko da, sa mga Iloilo, sa mga Ilonggo ko da, mga kapdanan, please halangin ka mo, kagabiling ka mo kita na isa balay because we are in a very dangerous situation. I grew up here in the Iloilo and so these games that I'm about to share to you, you have to consider that I don't have access to a lot of games because number one, we don't have access to legit official games. So this uh, mechanic or this truth about me will going to factor my consumption of games, my purchase or non-purchase of games, and also the types of games that I want, that I love, that have defined my childhood. So I started my entire gaming journey when I was, I think, seven or eight years old. I was in grade two and that was the computer class. And our teacher just told us to fall in line. We're going to the lab. We're going to have some practical um, lessons because back then, before that, we were just reading computer stuff in our textbooks. We already knew what the mouse, the monitor, the keyboard, the CPU is. So this time we're going inside the lab and have our hands on the actual unit itself. So we were falling in line, we were very excited, especially when uh, the hallway towards the computer lab is very dark. It's kind of creepy like that uh, hallway scene in The Shining except the lights are turned off, that kind of scene. When we got there, teacher told us to go into start all programs and then accessories I guess and then at the very bottom you'll find Mario teaches typing so I clicked on that and then what greeted me was a very colorful art and it had Mario in it, it had Princess Peach and then uh, the, our teacher told us to follow the buttons with the keys that we can see on the screen so when I saw Mario just standing there not doing anything and then I pressed the first uh, letter that is placed on the block Mario ran and then he jumped and so I was like what is this this is like a cartoon that I'm watching on TV but it's following what I have just told him to do so it's like what is this this is something else and so I was punching those buttons and whenever I fail to punch the right key, Mario would slow down and he wouldn't do anything. And so there was this relationship between me as the inputter and the game. But back then, I didn't have, uh, you know, the elaborate standards for what makes a game good or not. But the just the sheer fact that I can interact with this presentation that looks like a cartoon is mind-boggling and I was just smitten by it. It was literally love at first sight with video games. So fast forward to my grade 3 encounter with this game. So this game, I can remember, my classmates were already ahead of me with this practical lesson and then they told me Uy, that's what they told me and I was so excited and when I went in the game is Sonic 3 and Knuckles that game is so awesome when I played it I was so like in awe and my my eyes were like what is this there's this blue hedgehog thingy that can spin around in circles when you press down and enter you you mash down and enter and then he would spin and when you release the the buttons Sonic would just catapult forward and then just go around to whatever obstacle that he would go into and then those rings when you collect those rings it makes the sound like it's so cool it's so addictive for me and the fact that you have this multiple 
power-ups of a barrier that you can have. You can have the fire, the bubble, and the stars, <laughs> the star slingy. And you can also have this special attack with just one button. You can jump with one button, and then when you, you press the jump button again, Sonic can do another attack. And that varies on whether you have the fire or the bubble or without any barrier. So that is cool. And after that session, after that class, that practical class, I basically went to my teacher and told him, can I have any way to get this game so that I can play it on our PC? And he said, okay, well, yeah, I, I will just come back to you later. And then I waited several days and that request of mine i guess i forgot about it and then just before summer our teacher called me in class or maybe he went into me i don't know I, I forgot but basically what he did was he gave me a cd it had no labels on it again we have no way of purchasing legit games in iloilo here in the philippines we have no pc game store and the only store that we can have that uh, has official games are the Game Boy Advance games because here in Iloilo, the Game Boy Advance is the only uh, legit game system that we can purchase ba back then. It was, I think, 1999 or 2000. I think it was 2000 because I was 8 years old or 2001 when I was 9. So my teacher gave me this crystal clear box with no labels on it. It, it had just the CD itself with the marker label Sonic. So it's like, but I was very happy. I was like, wow, I, I already forgot about my request, but my teacher gave me this. I was like shaking and I went home and I installed it. I already know how to install it because we already learned about it in our textbooks and in some of our practical lessons. So it played, I played the game in my home and it was summer. My, my teacher gave me that just before summer and I completed the game. On that summer break it was so memorable I felt like every time I played the game when my parents are away and then I'm going to step into my PC I'm going to boot the game it feels like I'm entering another portal which is full of creatures full of dizzying obstacles I especially love the car carnival level for me it was creepy it was dizzying but the soundtrack is so memorable in some way and also the boss soundtrack whenever Dr. Robotnik appears is so me memorable that I kept humming that same old tune in my mind even now when, whenever I see something dangerous <laughs> this, this is kind of a nerdy uh, thing to do but whenever there, I see something dangerous or something sinister is about to happen in real life I would like hum those tin 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 tin, which is kind of weird. Anyway, that's me. Sonic 3 and Knuckles is one of the most memorable games I have ever played. So back when we had our first PC in 2000, because our parents decided to wait until the y Y2K issue would be over, when January 2000 came and then the tech world was able to prove that there was no end of the world is going to be happening and the computers are working fine my parents decided to buy a pc but again we have no way of purchasing legit pc games there's just no way so i decided to just scour around the pc with the hopes of finding a game that i can play that's the only way that i can play anything which is sad very sad but fortunately, I was able to find games that were already installed in our PC. Bad news is some of them are demos. Some of them are arcades. There is no full game, like full on triple A adventure game that I can play. And these are, I have my notes here, Demon Star Demo. It was just three levels, but I played that game every day three times because there uh, there are three levels i would play the game uh, with the three levels multiple times and i already memorized the patterns of the enemies the patterns of the asteroids that's coming down from from above and the power ups are going to pick up and the soundtrack the soundtrack is really creepy for me and i remember that the soundtrack is so creepy that when i heard sweet child of mine 
I associate that song to the background music of Demon Star that I will also feel creeped out by Sweet Child of Mine for some reason. I don't know why, it's the first level, it has a similar vibe to Sweet Child of Mine which is very creepy. I really remember that, I remember the feeling of being creeped out when I hear that music especially Sweet Child of Mine, I don't know. Okay, so next game that was pre-installed on our PC, which is not a full-on game because this is an arcade game, but I enjoyed, I enjoyed really much, is Virtua Cop 2. This is an arcade game that I usually see in the arcades. Virtua Cop 2 is so memorable, I can remember every pattern of the enemy and especially the hostages that would scream, SOMEBODY HELP ME! It is so funny when they does this sound but at the same time they're also annoying when they would pop out during the times that are so hectic when there are many enemies and they would like out of nowhere just go out of your firing line and then they will say somebody help <laughs> virtual cop 2 is also the first game that i have encountered cheats exist back then i didn't know how cheats work i confirmed it was there because when i when the game booted up and it was my practice to mash buttons to magically make it go faster. I also do that when the Windows 98 would boot up and then you can see the fading logo bar thingy at the bottom pass by and by. I would mash space because I thought it would go faster. I don't know, just kinda makes sense for my child brain, I guess. When I was mashing buttons, I accidentally hit F6. And F6 was the special menu button for Virtual Cop 2. And on there, I can adjust, I think, health. I can adjust ammo. And also, I can unlock the special weapon, which had infinite ammo and had a machine gun type of a rate of fire. It was very easy to complete the game on that way. But I specifically remember that the last boss of that game is very easy compared to the third level, which is the tank. It is kind of weird because even if I don't use the special weapon, just the normal weapon, you can just defeat the boss by just accurately shooting at the projectiles and then shooting him. Which is kind of what the first boss, the beginner level boss does. Kind of weird. But again, Virtual Cop 2, one of the most memorable games that I have ever played. So next game that I'm going to mention is not a PC game but it's another game that consumes my elementary life. That would be Pokemon, especially Pokemon Gold. Uh, I can remember Pokemon Gold consuming not just me, but also my classmates to the point that I don't eat lunch just for this game. Also, there's this game called Space Impact on the phone, which is a side-scrolling shooter where you shoot alien stuff. It is on a Nokia 30. 300? I forgot the name, but it's a black and white game, I guess. And this game in Pokemon, it was so captivating. I was so addicted to them that I would skip my lunch during elementary. And I was a fat kid. I was a fat kid who had lots of appetite. But whenever there's Pokemon and there's space impact on my classmate, I would just skip my lunch and play them for that whole hour. I will not get hungry. And even if I get hungry, it's worth it because I was just so into those games, and especially Pokemon. I remember during our recess, we would always play this game even on just a single, I guess, section. That would be the Elite Four. That section we would replay over and over. We wouldn't go on adventures. We're not going into around the map or something like that. We would just level up our Pokemon on the Elite Four. And I remember being so into the leveling up, the, the promise of growing and the promise of picking your favorite Pokemon and then allowing it to evolve. It was so alluring to me that I remember this sin or crime I committed to my classmate because the Pokemon that we're playing is not in my Game Boy. I have no Game Boy at the time and I was so envy. We have just one Game Boy from our classmate that we're playing the Pokemon on. And so after our class, we were playing Pokemon. And then for some reason, my the owner of the Game Boy is not there. So I was just alone playing. I think he will be coming back. But then when I was playing alone, 
my yaya or my nanny my nanny arrived to pick me up to go home but then my classmate is not yet here to pick up his game boy so i was so into the game that i decided to go home with the game boy <laughs> so sorry gedruel i stole your game boy i went home and i did not just place the game boy on my bag and then went home with guilt no i was playing the game boy while going home even in the jeep even in the jeepney even while walking was playing the game boy it's so cool that we would run through the elite four with just one move for pokemon <laughs> we were so overpowered but we didn't care we were seeing the end credits over and over and over again but then when we come back into the game we would go back right into the elite four and then kill them again <laughs> so as you can see guys the sun has now come down and you can't see the good lighting in my face anymore i hope that i can see you on my next video and until then please stay safe everyone halong good